In this video, we are going to look into synthesis of di and polysubstituted benzenes. First, let's look at synthesis of di-substituted benzenes. And we will look at that on example of bromonitrobenzene. So starting benzene itself, how can we prepare each of the three regioisomers, ortho, meta, and para bromonitrobenzene? Since substituents have different directing effects, obviously order of substitution will be important. So we can prepare either meta bromonitrobenzene or a mixture of ortho and para isomers and then separate them to isolate the desired uh, or product desired isomer. So to prepare meta isomer, we should introduce nitro substituent first. Nitro substituent is meta directing, so we carry out nitration reaction first to prepare nitrobenzene. And now, since nitro substituent is meta directing, when we carry out bromination, bromine will end up in meta position. So product is meta bro nitrobenzene. Alternatively, if we carry out bromination first, then we are introducing ortho para directing substituent. So we prepare bromobenzene first. Remember that halogens are unique in that they are deactivating substituents, but they are ortho para directing. So unlike all other deactivating substituents with a meta directing, halogens are unique in that they are deactivating and ortho para directing. So now, when we carry out nitration of bromobenzene, we obtain mixture of ortho and para bromonitrobenzene. And then all we need to do is separate the two isomers. Usually, separation is relatively easy because ortho and para isomers have quite different properties, typically different solubilities and different uh, melting and boiling points. So they would be separated sometimes by distillation, frequently by recrystallization. So Separation is not that difficult. Uh, these days you would usually actually carry out chromatography to separate. In the previous example, we have seen that the order of introduction of substituents was important to achieve desired regioselectivity. Sometimes order of substitutions is important because if we are introducing the activating substituent, then subsequent substitutions may not work because benzene ring may be deactivated towards subsequent reactions. So sometimes order is important simply to be able to achieve the desired transformation. And this is shown in example here. Uh, we can, for example, introduce deactivating substituent in friedel crafts oscillation first. So uh, friedel crafts oscillation gives this compound this particular compound is named acetophenone. We'll cover this naming later in the course. And then in subsequent step, we can carry out sulfonation reaction. These two steps will work and we will get product in reasonable yield. But reverse order actually would not work because friedel crafts alkylation and acylation does not work on deactivated substrates. So had we carried out sulfonation first, even though both substituents are meta-directing and, and it would not appear to make a difference which substituent we introduce first, have we carried out sulfonation first, then friedel crafts oscillation would not have worked because friedel crafts oscillation cannot be carried out, or alkylation for that matter, cannot be carried out on deactivated benzene ring. And that's shown here in this example, or in this uh, equation. So carrying out sulfonation first and then attempting friedel crafts oscillation will result in no reaction. Sometimes substituent itself does not exhibit desired directing effect. So it may be ortho para directing if you want meta directing substituent or meta directing if you want ortho para directing substituent. Then we can carry out reaction on substituent itself to convert it into substituent with desired directing effect, then carry out reaction on benzene ring to introduce new substituent into desired position, and then finally again carry out reaction on the substituent to reverse transformation to convert it back to the original substituent. Here are some examples. Alkyl substituents such as ethyl group 
is activating and or the paradirecting substituent. Oxidation with Jones reagent, chromium trioxide and sulfuric acid, will convert that into acyl substituent, into deactivating substituent that exhibits metadirecting effect. We can reduce then that acyl group back to alkyl group, for example, in Clemenson reduction. Another example is amino group. It is again activating and ortho paradirecting, but we can oxidize it to nitro group, deactivating and metadirecting substituent. And then after carrying out transformation of nitrobenzene, we can then reduce nitro group back to amino group, for example, by catalytic hydrogenation. Here is an example of actual synthesis. So starting with ethyl benzene, a reaction with Jones reagent gives a compound ketone, that's acetophenone. And then acetophenone upon bromination gives meta product, metabromo acetophenone. That's because keto group is meta directing group. And then, for example, Wolf Kirchner reduction will result in reduction of keto group back to methyl, uh, to, sorry, methylene group. And that results in formation of metabromo, uh, metabromoethyl benzene. Had we tried to carry out bromination on ethyl benzene, we would, end, we would have ended up with mixture of ortho and para substituents. If we want to carry out synthesis of tri-substitute benzene, that usually means that two substituents are already present and we are introducing the third. That means that we have to consider the effects of the existing two substituents and then where they are going to direct the third substituent. First example is a case where we have sulfonic acid and in pair position relative to sulfonic acid there's an amide substituent. So let's consider the directing effect first of the amide substituent. It's circled in blue and it's directing the incoming substituent ortho and para to itself. Para position is taken by a sulfonate group, which means that only ortho positions are available, and so uh, where directing substituent, where it would direct incoming substituent is shown here with blue squares. Sulfonic acid group is meta directing, it's circled in red, and its directing effect meta positions relative to itself are shown by red squares. We can see that both substituents direct incoming substituent in the same positions of the benzene ring. So, for example, nitration will occur in such a way that incoming nitro group and ortho relative to amide group and meta relative to sulfonic acid group. So, in this case, two substituents reinforce each other in terms of directing effects. Another such example is example of metaxylene. Metaxylene is meta benzene. So, we have two Methyl groups. <clears throat> Methyl group on the top, circled in red, directs incoming substituent ortho and para to itself. And that's shown by red squares. And then one to the side, again, is ortho para directing. It directs incoming substituent ortho para to itself, shown in blue squares. So let's see if we carry out nitration. Three positions are available. But one is not going to occur. And one is not going to occur is one between the two methyl groups because of the steric hindrance. Incoming substituent would have to squeeze in and then end up being between the two existing substituents. That would result in considerable steric hindrance. For that reason, substitution will occur only in the two positions that are basically on the outside, or, um, that are next to only one of the methyl groups. Those positions are equivalent, and substitution in either of the two positions and results in the formation of the same product. So the only product out of this reaction is uh, one nitro to four dimethyl benzene, or actually correct name would be uh, uh, two four dimethyl one nitro benzene. In the previous examples, two existing substituents had directing effects that were reinforcing each other. So they were directing new incoming substituent in the same position or positions of the benzene ring. But what happens if directing effects are not the same? If directing effects are competing, 
so existing substituents would direct incoming substituent into different position or positions. Then we have to consider relative magnitude or strength of their effects. And that's in fact why we are classifying, for example, substituents as strongly, moderately, weakly, uh, activating or the uh, listed substituents in the order of deactivating ability. So let's consider this effect of the uh, directing effects of uh, parabromophenol. In this case, we have hydroxyl group of phenol, which is orthopara directing. In each case, para position is taken. So hydroxyl group will direct incoming substituent ortho to itself. That means where these blue squares show. And then a bromine substituent is also orthopara directing. It will direct incoming substituent ortho to itself. Para position is taken. That's shown by empty uh, red rectangles or squares. We know that hydroxyl group or oxygen is strongly activating, while bromine is weakly deactivating. That means that effect of oxygen is strong, while effect of bromine is weak. That's why bromine is indicated or directing effect is indicated by empty small red rectangles to indicate that the effect is weak. So effect of the oxygen is going to predominate. It's going to be important one because it's strong effect. Effect of bromine is weak and therefore we can ignore that effect. The effect that matters is the effect of oxygen. And so in this case, oxygen is going to direct incoming substituent ortho to itself, and the effect of bromine is something we can ignore because it's weak compared to the effect of oxygen. So if we carry out another bromination, second bromine atom is coming ortho to hydroxyl group. And so product is 2,4-dibromophenol. If two substituents have magnitude of the effect that is about the same. So here we have methyl group that is weakly activating and chlorine weakly deactivating. Both effects are relatively weak and both are orthopara directing. Again, they can be only ortho directing in this case because para position in each case is taken. Then we'll get a mixture of the two. So in this case, nitration of uh, para chlorotoluin will result in uh, mixture, close to one-to-one -to -one mixture of the two isomers, where nitro group is coming ortho to methyl group or ortho to chlorine. So if effects, magnitude effects is about the same, then we get a mixture because both substituents exert their directing effect. Finally, uh, previously we have seen that it is difficult to get one to three substitution pattern because uh, of the steric hindrance. But actually, we could do that. Let's consider example of anisole. So what if we want to prepare 2,6-dibromo anisole? That would be actually 1, 2, 3 substitution pattern. If we try to carry out bromination of anisole, we will end up with 2,4-dibromo anisole because of the steric hindrance, of the steric effects. But we can actually uh, block para position with substituent that could be reversibly removed. And that's sulfonate substituent. So first we carry out sulfonation and prepare sulfonic acid. Uh, para substitution is preferred because of the steric hindrance, so we get preferentially para isomer. We can get some ortho isomer, we will get some ortho isomer, we can separate ortho from para, and because reaction is reversible, we can carry out removal of the sulfonic group and then recycle uh, the resulting anisole. Then when we carry out bromination, of course, bromination occurs only in ortho position relative to oxygen or method relative to sulfonate group. They reinforce each other as we have seen previously. Now that we have obtained uh, bromination in desired positions, 2 and 6 relative to uh, methoxy group, now we remove sulfonic acid functionality by carrying out reaction in dilute acid, heating in dilute acid, and we obtain desired product, 2,6-dibromo anisole. This completes our overview of synthesis of di and tri substitute benzenes. And next, we are going to look into chemistry of aromatic diazonium salts.